Why does a university founded by a French priest in South Bend, Indiana, call themselves the Fighting Irish? Find out on this episode of Mascots and Monsters. Father Edward Soren founded the University of Notre Dame in 1844 and served as the school's first president. As you probably have guessed from the name, Notre Dame has French origins. In fact, the official name of the college is the University of Notre Dame du Lac, which translated means Our Lady of the Lake. Father Soren was French and a member of the French-founded Congregation of Holy Cross. So where did the Irish connection come from? For starters, nearly all university presidents since Soren claim Irish descent, and four of the six members of the Holy Cross who traveled to Indiana with Soren were Irish. But these facts are mere footnotes in a long, convoluted story of how Notre Dame gradually became known as the Fighting Irish, a story that spans nearly half a century. Unfortunately, no one knows exactly when, where, or how the name took hold. Much like the nicknames of other universities, the origin story is deeply embedded in one sport, a sport that started on college campuses of the East Coast and quickly stole the hearts of Americans from East to West, football. Notre Dame fielded its first football team in 1887 and began playing other local religious colleges. The press referred to these teams based on their religious denomination, like the Baptists or Methodists. Notre Dame was given the name of the Catholics or Irish. In the minds of the majority of the public, the terms Catholic and Irish went hand in hand, due to the fact that many of the Catholic immigrants during the late 19th and early 20th century came from Ireland. However, these nicknames carried with them negative connotations as Irish immigrants of that time were looked upon unfavorably by many Americans and often given derogatory nicknames. One story traces the Fighting Irish moniker back to their first football game between Notre Dame and Northwestern in 1899. As the second half opened, with Notre Dame leading 5-0, the Northwestern fans supposedly began chanting, Kill the Fighting Irish! Kill the Fighting Irish! But, assuming this is true, where did those fans get the name from? We can trace the origins of the name itself back to the Union Army's Fighting Irish 69th Regiment, part of the larger Irish Brigade of the American Civil War. Fighting alongside their green battle flag, the men of the 69th proved to be an effective fighting force, displaying great valor and bravery. Some say that when the press saw the Notre Dame football team playing with similar toughness and courage, and assuming the Catholic school was Irish, the 69th Regiment's nickname was given. Whether or not this is true, the story of the Fighting Irish of the 69th Brigade certainly is, as is Notre Dame's connection to them. The Brigade's beloved chaplain was Reverend William Corby, who would later become the third president of Notre Dame. However, the first generally accepted account of the name's connection with Notre Dame athletic teams, not to mention the first with some real documentation, comes in 1909 during the ninth meeting on the gridiron between Notre Dame and Michigan. Michigan having won the previous eight with a combined score of 121 to 16. While trailing at the half, a Notre Dame player reportedly turned to his teammates with names like Dolan, Kelly, Glenn, and Duffy and yelled, what's the matter with you guys? You're all Irish and you're not fighting worth a lick. Notre Dame roared back in the second half to win 11 to three. Following the game, sports writer E.A. Batchelor, supposedly having overheard the halftime exchange, attributed the victory to the fighting Irishman. This also marks the first turning point for Notre Dame football from a small school to one of national recognition. However, the name didn't seem to stick. Throughout the early 1900s, ethnic slurs directed toward the Catholics and Irish continued to be openly expressed, and the press continued to refer to Notre Dame's athletic teams as the Catholics, or worse, the Papists, or Dirty Irish. University leaders, viewing these names as insults, distanced themselves from such descriptions. However, this was a time when college teams around the nation began embracing more conventional monikers, often supplied by the press, instead of just their school name or colors. Notre Dame, beginning to establish themselves as a prominent university in football power, felt the pressure to embrace their own moniker. School publications chose to call their teams the Golden Blue, or the Notre Damers. The 1920s was also the era of former Notre Dame football standout and legendary coach Newt Rockney a natural storyteller who took any chance he had to spread the news of his university and team, even hiring student press agents to tell their story. Unlike other universities at the time, Notre Dame traveled the country playing a national schedule, a common practice today. This was rare before the advent of commercial flying. 
For this reason, new nicknames like the Ramblers and Rovers emerged, but these two were often meant as insults, suggesting Notre Dame was more focused on athletics than academics. The Fighting Irish moniker, however, returned as a favorite, thanks in part to a visit from notorious Irish freedom fighter Eamon de Valera. Arrested for his part in the 1916 Easter Rising and eventually fleeing to America, he began barnstorming the country, looking to gain support for his cause. Valera was accepted with open arms at Notre Dame on October 15, 1919. Scholastic, a school publication, indicates his visit swayed campus opinion in favor of the Fighting Irish moniker, however still not completely. A letter from an alumnus appeared in Scholastic that same year criticizing the name because many players were not of Irish descent. Others defended the name, with one alum writing, you don't have to be from Ireland to be Irish. Newt Rockney became an avid supporter of the name, using it when talking to the press as Notre Dame's popularity continued to rise. In 1924, they won the first of 11 national championships and soon became one of the first schools to have a true national following. Many fans from across the country especially Catholic and Irish Catholic, adopted the team as their own despite having no connection with the university. This was due in large part to the fact many related to Notre Dame's David versus Goliath rise, knocking off established powerhouse schools in the process and thus representing an upward mobility that Catholic and Irish Catholics everywhere have been striving for since coming to America. In 1925, a sports writer for the New York Post and former Notre Dame alum Francis Wallace began frequently using the Fighting Irish moniker in his articles, a name that had come to characterize the underdog tenacity, never say die spirit, and scrappy determination of Rockney's teams. Soon, students, faculty, players, and press alike were using the name. After Wallace moved to the New York Daily News in 1927, one of the largest circulation papers in the country, the name was known from coast to coast. Rockney put to rest any questioning of the name's validity based on the grounds that neither all students nor players were Irish when he said, they're all Irish to me. They have the Irish spirit and that's what counts. Finally, in 1927, University President Reverend Matthew Walsh adopted the Fighting Irish name as the Notre Dame nickname, stating, the university authorities are in no way averse to the name Fighting Irish as applied to our athletic teams. It seems to embody the kind of spirit that we'd like to see carried into effect by the various organizations that represent us on the athletic field. I sincerely hope that we may always be worthy of the ideals embodied in the term Fighting Irish. The name that once carried derogatory connotations was transformed into a badge of honor, transcending ethnicity or ancestry. The emergence of the leprechaun took a bit longer, however. Animals, especially dogs, were popular in Notre Dame's early days, with the Irish Terrier eventually becoming a staple on the sidelines, as evident by the team's official mascot in 1935, an Irish Terrier named Clashmore Mike. An Irishman became a regular sighting at pep rallies in the 1940s, and finally in 1960 the Leprechaun joined the ranks of cheerleaders on the sidelines of football games. By the end of the decade, the Irish Terrier had faded away. The famous Leprechaun logo used today was designed by sports artist Theodore W. Drake in 1964 and was featured on the cover of Time magazine in November of that year alongside new head football coach Ara Parsegian. Today, Notre Dame houses the Keogh Naughton Institute for Irish Studies, offers international study programs in Ireland, and boasts distinguished scholars of Irish literature, history, and society, in addition to being the largest center for the study of the Irish language outside of Dublin. The University of Notre Dame continues to be a diverse campus, full of a wide range of ethnicities, nationalities, and religions. But as former Notre Dame alum and faculty member Father Charles M. Carey once put it, the name is a symbol of fidelity and courage to everyone who suffers from discrimination, to everyone who has an uphill fight for the elemental decencies and the basic Christian principles woven into the texture of our nation. Preserving this tradition and this meaning of Irish at Notre Dame does honor to every one of us. It's more than a name, more than a people, it is the faith.